Mr. CFO Wa, Chairman of the National Gallery of Singapore, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here with you this evening in these new old buildings to celebrate the official opening of our National Gallery. If you visit the great cities of the world, New York, Paris, Shanghai, London, Mumbai, you'll find that arts and culture are an integral part of these cities. Paris has the Louvre, New York has the Met, Shanghai has the Shanghai Museum, Tokyo has the Tokyo National Museum, Mumbai has the CSMVS, is a Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Vastu Sangrahalaya. <laughs> I don't speak Marathi, but it <laughs> was previously named the Prince of Wales Museum. <laughs> uh, these cities are not just business or transportation hubs or dense conurbations of people. They are cities with a sense of history and identity, bridging the old and the new. You see this in the cultural institutions, the places that are rich with art and history, that hold a significant place in the life of the city and the hearts of the residents. Places which residents and tourists can visit, learn and appreciate the culture and the heritage of the place, the spirit and the genius of the people. Because arts and culture are a window to who they are as a people, where they have been, where they are heading. In fact, it's not just the great cities, but many other smaller ones which have an, an identity and a civic pride of their own, which have built little niche art institutions, both public and private. In China, almost every city, even second or third tier cities, is building museums, almost 4,000 museums and growing. When I visit Japan, even in small towns far from the great cities like Tokyo or Osaka, I often come across art galleries, often founded by some wealthy philanthropist. He's found a beautiful piece of land, forests, hills, streams, and he's built a little architectural jewel there in which to display a small collection of artworks shared with the public. In Singapore, we have a few such museums and galleries, and we are progressively developing and upgrading them and improving their programming to reach out to more Singaporeans. We've just refreshed the permanent galleries at the National Museum, which presents our Singapore story. We've also just completed the first phase of the Asian Civilization Museum revamp that's just across the road, complete with two elegant new wings, one of them housing the Tang shipwreck collection. And we have museums which celebrate our diversity, like the Malay Heritage Center at Kampung Glam, the newly opened Indian Heritage Center in Little India, and the soon to be completed Singapore Chinese Cultural Center at the Conference Hall. And we have the Singapore Art Museum at the Old St. Joseph's Institution, along with 8Q at SAM, which was the old Catholic high school. But up till now, we've not had a dedicated visual arts museum on this scale, like the National, Her National Gallery of Singapore. You want something, or at least you imagine something, like the National Gallery of London, in Trafalgar Square, or the Reich Museum in Amsterdam. A museum we can point to and say, this is truly a national gallery. So today, we will open our very own National Gallery of Singapore in two historic buildings, the old Supreme Court and this City Hall. These buildings are part of the collective memory of Singaporeans. They've witnessed defining moments in our nation's history. In September 1945, the Japanese forces in Southeast Asia under Count Terauchi surrendered to the Supreme Commander of Allied Forces in Southeast Asia, Admiral Lord Louis Mountbatten, here in the City Hall Chambers. 
In June 1959, when Singapore attained self-government, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew addressed a massive rally from the City Hall steps. And he said, once in a long while in the history of a people, there comes a moment of great change. Tonight is such a moment in our lives. We begin a new chapter in the history of Singapore. And in front of this building on the Padang, every year on August the 9th, for many years after independence, we held our National Day parades. And still in special years, like this year, SG50, we come back here and we hold a special National Day parade, reviewed by the President on the steps of the City Hall. And that's why we gazetted the Supreme Court and the City Hall buildings as national monuments many years ago. But national monuments too need to be kept up and refurbished. And 10 years ago, when they needed to be done up again, we moved out the Supreme Court and the government departments which are here to new places. And they were very happy to go out. <laughs> and the question then was, what do we do with these important buildings? We could have just left them as buildings for people to walk through because previously access had been limited. We could have used them for government offices or we could have released them for commercial use. For example, to build a heritage hotel like the Fullerton. In fact, we seriously considered that option. Because no government ministry or department wanted to occupy these buildings. It's much easier to start with an empty rectangle and put whatever cables and computers you need in. But here, everything is untouchable, <laughs> sacred, and very difficult to use. And even, actually, for a museum, from a practical point of view, it might have been cheaper and easier to build a new museum on a greenfield site rather than renovate these old buildings to a new purpose. But these old buildings in front of the Padang are a treasure. So fortunately, after we thought it over carefully, the cabinet decided that we would start a national gallery and we would put it in these buildings. And today, this is the result. In large part, this was thanks to Dr. Lee Boon Yang. There he is. He was then minister in charge of the arts. He made a persuasive and compelling case, and he worked hard to convince his colleagues, including me, despite considerable skepticism. Not whether you can redo the buildings, but what art are you going to put into the buildings? because it's the contents and the programming which makes the museum come to life. And he convinced us that we did have the collections, we did have the heritage, we could build it up, and we needed this. And I'm glad he succeeded in persuading us, and we are now here. And I'm very glad that even now, in a different capacity as chairman of Keppel, Dr. Lee continues to support the art with Keppel's generous donation to the gallery. I'd like to thank also the late Dr. Balaji Sadasivan, who was Senior Minister of State in the Ministry of Information, Commerce and the Arts, and who chaired the steering committee overseeing the gallery's implementation in its early stages, in fact, until he passed away. And I'm very happy that his wife, Dr. Ma Swan Hu, can join us this evening. Where's Swan Hu? So that's how we embarked on this path, to modernize the buildings, that, but to preserve their heritage, to turn them into an understated but high-quality museum in keeping with the ethos of our society. You don't find baroque capitals or gold leaf all over the place. It's quiet, it's plain and simple, but it's historic. And if you come in, you know this is a special place. I have been very, I've been through 
previews and quiet secret visits to this place over the last few months. And I've been impressed by the work done and the elegant integration of the two monuments because the buildings have been immaculately conserved. If you are familiar with how they used to look, you will be able to tell that the architects have maintained the, the structure of the building thoughtfully, keeping many details intact, even the furniture. And yet they don't look like government departments anymore. <laughs> We've injected new life and purpose into them, and we should thank the architect, Mr. Jean-Francois Milou, who is a Singapore PR. Unfortunately, he's unable to join us this evening, as well as the builders who executed and realized the vision. The building is a work of art in itself, a fitting place to display our national collection. Singapore art will, of course, take pride of place in the Singapore gallery, as these pieces tell the history of our young nation. Southeast Asian art, where Singapore has one of the most comprehensive collections in the world, will also occupy a significant part of the gallery. Because Singapore is not an island unto ourselves. And to understand where we come from, we have to appreciate our neighborhood and our context. And this gallery will also display works of budding talent, as well as established artists. It's a gallery not just for art aficionados, aficionados, but also for everyone, including families and children. We'll have workshops, carnivals, fun activities. And the Keppel Center for Art Education is designed to engage our young visitors and their families. I just had a quick walk through just now, and I highly commend it. You'll enjoy it twice as much with your grandchildren, but you will enjoy it a lot even by yourself. <laughs> and we hope that this gallery will nurture a sense of place and history and also a confidence in our future. The National Gallery, with 800 pieces in its collection to its name and a few more borrowed from galleries around the region, is nowhere near the scale and riches of the Louvre or the Met but it will have its own special advantages and charms. We've got a beautiful building to house the art in, which all of us can access and enjoy. When you walk through the galleries, you can't help but feel a sense of the history. And it's also the contents which count. We have a good collection of our own art by artists like Chua Mia Ti, Liu Kang, Georgette Chen, Chen Wen Si, Iskandar Jalil, Chen Chong Sui, Joy Wung Yang, and many others. The Southeast Asian art has been enriched by do generous donations from renowned artists like Wu Kuan Zhong. And we'll gradually build up our own collections over time through acquisitions and donations. But also, as our own artists continue to contribute to the arts and cultural scene in Singapore. But more than the building and the collection, it's the people who make the institution, the community around the gallery, the artists who are inspired by our history and our culture, and who share with us their thoughts and their ideas expressed through art. I'd like to thank the families and the collectors too for making the rich display of artworks possible with their art donations and patronage. I'd like to thank the management and staff, the former chairman, Mr. Ko Xiao Chuan, the first chairman, the current chairman, Xie Fu Hua, the CEO, Chong Siak Ching, and the museum, museum director, Eugene Tan, and many others. I had one lunch with Sia Fu Hua, he may have forgotten, and he lobbied me. He says he went to the Tate Modern. It's a vibrant place. I said, it sounds too modern for me. <laughs> but he convinced me that the museum needs to have that life, that change, that, that withedness, that buzz, for people to come to want to interact and to go away excited, thrilled, and inspired. And I think as chairman, he will make that happen. There are many others too, the volunteers, docents, the researchers, the surveyors, the gallery hosts, the greeters, all of whom make the pieces fit together. I'd like to thank the generous donors for their philanthropy, DBS, Keppel, the Ng Teng Fong family, Singtel, the Tote Board, UOB, at Accenture. 
The National Gallery will be shaped by our people because the measure of success is not how many tourists come or how our museum ranks internationally, but whether Singaporeans feel that the gallery belongs to them, visit it to enjoy what it offers, and in time, come to love the gallery. And I hope that through the many exhibitions and activities, we will all appreciate better where we come from, discover new perspectives of who we are, and be inspired to paint our own canvases in many mediums for the future. Then this place will become our National Gallery and the pride of Singapore. Thank you very much.